It's time for some book reviews, so prepare for some extreme pretentiousness. Most people are aware of a handful of Victorian authors, and there are a lot of Victorian authors um, whose works, the names of the authors people recognise, but whether the books themselves get read that much anymore, well, that's more debatable. One author people would probably recognise is George Eliot. However, George Eliot is a pen name, and it's a pen name for Mary Ann Evans. Um, she was an English novelist, poet, journalist, and translator. Now, she wrote a number of novels, but I wanted to concentrate particularly on Adam Bede. Adam Bede was her first novel. It was published pseudonymously, even though Evans was a public, well-published and highly respected scholar of her time. The novel has remained in print ever since. The basic plot of the novel is, ba is a story, as it notes here, for as quoting the Oxford Companion to Literature, a story told to George Eliot, or if we could, um, um, by her aunt Elizabeth Evans about a confession of child murder. It's a interesting tale of rural life, and this Wikipedia article uses the term pastoral. I wouldn't call it quite so pastoral, though. Um. It has four main characters. Hetty Sorrel is a rather vain, self-absorbed young girl who thinks rather too much of herself, although it's not entirely her own fault when you read the narrative. Captain Arthur Donnytorn, the young squire who seduces her, and he's certainly to blame for a lot of the problems that, that spring from that. The fact that he gets off... Um, To, to, um, and away with some of that illustrates the world they live in, unfortunately, where women simply would take the blame for some things where men should have taken an equal share of the blame. The main character uh, is Adam B Bede, her unacknowledged suitor, and Diana Morris, Hetty's cousins, a fervent, virtuous, and beautiful Methodist lay preacher. You can see there it's got a world of kind of the deserving poor, the undeserving poor, religion all sorts of other issues of, Vict of English country life kind of intersecting. Although it's set in 1799, which is pre-Victorian, it's very much a Victorian novel in that case. Wikipedia's done a good job of summing up the basic sort of plot here, so I'll read it out. I'm also going to read a short part of the book as well, because I think it's a... A novel that's not particularly well read anymore. It's not read all that much anymore, except in literary courses or curious kids might pick it up if they're a bookish type of kid like I was. Or, but it, it seems to have slipped down the charts in popularity. I'm going to have a look at Wikipedia and see what the last adaptations are in a minute. But anyway, Adam, a local carpenter, much admired for his integrity and intelligence, is in love with Hetty. She is attracted to Arthur, the local squire's charming grandson and heir, and falls in love with him. When Adam interrupts a tryst between them, Adam and Arthur fight. Arthur agrees to give up Hetty and leaves Hayslope to return to his militia. After he leaves, Hetty Sorrel agrees to marry Adam, but shortly before their marriage discovers that she is pregnant. In desperation, she leaves in search of Arthur but cannot find him. Unwilling to return to village on the amount, account of the shame and ostracism she would have to ensure, she delivers her baby with the assistance of a friendly woman she encounters. She subsequently abandons the infant in a field, but not being able to bear Sir Charles' cry, she tries to retrieve the infant. However, she is too late, the infant having already disposed of died of exposure. Now, you can see how an adaptation of that book could be used still to hi highlight all sorts of themes. And I'm sure some of the adaptations listed on the left of this Wikipedia article have been indeed. Hetty is caught and tried for child murder. Um, me, I'm asking what about the bloke, but there you go. It was a different world. She is found guilty and sentenced to hang. Dinah answers, enters the prison and pledges to stay with Hetty. Until the end, a compassionate brings about Hetty's contrite confession. When Arthur Donny Tomlin leave for the lish of his grandfather of his funeral, here's a end pending execution. He races the court and has the sentence commuted to penal transportation. 
that's all very well and that's lovely of Arthur to do that but um well to coin a cliche it does take two to tango and of course ultimately Adam and Diana who gradually became aware of their mutual love Marianne lived peace with his family let's have a look at what adaptations there have been The last adaptation was in 2001, I see, for um, BBC Radio 4. That was an adaptation for 1991 for the BBC. And we've got a poster of the Theatre Royal there. That must be a very old, old sort of uh, adaptation, I would guess. The Edwardian era, I would guess, looking at that. And there's a silent film adaptation. Now, I'd recommend it highly as a, as a book. I read it as a teenager, and it was a quite interesting work. Um, I just read it out of interest. At that point, I was kind of reading as a magpie, like pick up anything that interested me, read it, and buy loads of old classic novels and read them. Here's Project Gothenburg, a resource I wish had existed when I was a teenager. Chapter One, The Workshop, and the further... Gutenberg chooses to stay still for a minute. Let me go back up a bit. With a single drop of ink for a mirror, the Egyptian sorcerer undertakes to reveal to any chance corner far-reaching visions of the past. This is what I undertake to do for you, reader. With this drop of ink at the end of my pen, I will show you the roomy workshop of Mr. Jonathan Burge, carpenter and builder in the village of Hayslope, as it appeared on the 18th of June in the year of our Lord, 1799. The afternoon sun was warm by the five workmen there, busy upon doors and window frames and wainscoting, a scent of pine wood from a tent like pile of planks outside the open door mingled its scent with the scent of the elder bushes, which were spreading their summer slow close to the open window opposite. Now, of course, that's a dated style, it couldn't be other, but George Eliot manages to build a lovely vision of a world at a little village there and of a community in a very short passages. And she also manages to pack in a load of stuff. Now, yes, she writes in a style that's gone out of fashion, but I've read lots of novels and lots of different styles, and I don't expect novelists from the Victorian era or, or further back even to be writing in a style that I'm used to. Um, that's my novel recommendation for the day. I'm going to be trying to do some books and art for a bit to, to take my mind off some other things, shall we say.